You've probably heard one of Wayland's core design principles. Every frame is perfect, which is shortened down for a longer quote, every frame is perfect, by which I mean the applications will be able to control the rendering enough that we'll never see tearing, lag, redrawing, or flicker. And I think for your typical general desktop usage, this is a much better experience. For things like watching videos, browsing the web, moving windows around, you generally don't want to see screen tearing. Having no screen tearing, I think would look much, much better. However, it has been a giant thorn in the side of Wayland because this is a fundamentally flawed design principle because you don't want every frame to be perfect. There are some situations like a high action game, for example, where that doesn't really matter for a lot of people. Instead, what you want is low input lag and recent frames, even if that does mean a little bit of screen tearing. Now, some people disagree. Some people just never like screen tearing full stop, but I don't care about it. And a lot of people out there will get rid of VSync just to have a better experience. However, on Wayland, you couldn't exactly do that. You could modify the timing of the VSync, but it was built into the compositor and you couldn't disable it. And for quite a while now, this merge request has existed. Tearing updates protocol, which basically does as it says on the tin. It enables your compositor to actually let tearing happen. It doesn't mean that tearing is optimal or you want tearing to happen, but it allows it to happen. And I'll go over how this works in just a moment, but the first comment gives you a good indication of the general project opinion about doing this. I'm not convinced this is a good idea. Wayland is designed to be frame perfect, i.e. not have bad intermediary frames. And this protocol breaks this. A good presentation time protocol would have more benefits. And this got a bunch of downvotes by users who actually want this feature to be available. However, we'll come back to this user because over this development, they've sort of gone through a bit of a character arc. And the reason why I'm discussing this change now, even though it's been around for like a year and a half, two years, is it's getting very close to being ready. It's getting very close to being available to the regular user. So the purpose of this protocol is to provide two separate presentation modes to be hinted at by your drivers. The first one being the state we've always been using, VSync. The latest available frame from the client gets presented with VSync. Tearing cannot be observed. Assuming that your drivers actually function properly, which is true unless your name is NVIDIA. And then the new one is going to be async. Frames from the client are presented with asynchronous page flips as soon as possible after the commit. Tearing can be observed. Most, if not all modern displays, update their pixels in rows from left to right and top to bottom, and do that in a fixed time frame. Now this fixed time frame isn't exactly accurate because this isn't true on a variable refresh rate display and those actually are pretty common nowadays but assuming you don't have a variable refresh rate display let's say you have a 60 hertz monitor for example this will take about 16.67 milliseconds to update the whole screen including the time the screen takes to switch back to the top which is called the v blank interval a gpu can synchronize with that updating to make sure only one whole image get shown per update cycle. The image only gets changed at the V-blank interval. This is known as VSync. It doesn't matter how many frames your GPU can generate at the V-blank interval, it is only going to show one frame. Whereas with an asynchronous page flip, we don't do that synchronization. So once a new image from the application comes in, the image that is getting sent to the display immediately gets updated. This will cause visual breakages called tearing. At one or multiple rows in the display, the image is abruptly changed. This right here is a simulated example, and let's say, for example, you're running at 
180 FPS on a 60 Hertz display. So it's gonna start off by trying to render this first frame, but when that second frame is ready, that second frame is immediately going to be rendered. This is gonna cause the second breakage. And then that third frame is immediately gonna be sent in again and then cause this third breakage. Now, tearing isn't always this bad. This is just a really extreme example and can be mitigated through various factors in the application. So it is gonna be fairly application dependent also, just bringing your frame rate more in line with the display is going to give you much less tearing. And while many users find this completely undesirable and never want to see it, many users like myself actually prefer this asynchronous style of rendering like you'd see on, you know, Windows or X11, for example, due to the immense benefits it gives you when you are actually gaming. Because in many instances, VSync can introduce stuttering, whether that's because your frame rate is too low, and to compensate for there not being a new frame ready, it has to display something so it just repeats the previous frame. And done enough, it's going to feel like the action is like really, really choppy. Or the other direction, where you're generating way too many frames, and now you're gonna show the most recent frame that is available, but you had to skip a frame to actually get there. So now it still feels stuttery, but it's stuttery because of a complete opposite reason. Now, assuming the implementation is actually good, both of these issues can be addressed with a variable refresh rate, where rather than having this fixed time interval where you update the screen and nothing else, you update the screen when your GPU has a new frame ready. So if you're running at 37 FPS, you don't update at 60 Hertz, you update at 37 Hertz. If you're running at 116 FPS, you do the same, not 120 or 60 or anything else in between, 100 and whatever number I just said. Also, just generally running at a higher frame rate with a higher refresh rate is going to make each of the individual frames feel a lot less meaningful. There might still be stutter, but stutter at 60 hertz is probably going to feel a lot worse than stutter at 360 hertz, assuming you're not also just running at the exact same frame rate. But the problem with this is you're fixing a software issue with really expensive hardware. Now, it's nowhere near as expensive as it used to be, but I shouldn't have to go and buy a whole new display just to fix the broken software. VSync also inherently increases latency. A frame is only updated in line with the V-blank interval. So let's say a user input happens just on or just after that update cycle. Before that updated user input can be displayed on the screen, you have to wait all the way until the next update. Whereas without having that synchronization, if that input happens, you can just replace the rest of the frame with this new frame that has the user input on it. For a lot of users and a lot of games, this extra couple of milliseconds isn't really that big of a deal. But when you have like, 10,000 hours in Counter-Strike Go, you're playing Apex Legends 12 hours a day, you're going to get very sensitive to a couple of extra milliseconds being off with what you're doing. You can't exactly pinpoint the exact point it feels weird, but it's going to overall feel slightly sloppier than playing on something like Windows or Xorg. Now, a lot of the gaming branded stuff is really dumb, like gaming chairs and gaming drinks, but when we're talking about a higher refresh rate mouse, or a better gray to gray time on your display, or a better refresh rate on your display, and things like this, these are things that do offer a legitimate advantage, and gamers are going to be very sensitive to that little bit of extra milliseconds. But even though this seems like a pretty just you know, cut and dried case. Give users the option to enable this if they want to enable it. Not everyone has been in agreement. This is from Michael Danza. For what it's worth, I'm not convinced tearing is really needed even for games. Tearing can gain at most half a refresh cycle of latency, 9 milliseconds at 60 hertz, 4 milliseconds at 144 hertz on average. Also, I find tearing distracting, which might outweigh any latency gain. And this response is from the creator of the merge request. I think so too, but some others don't. 
Although a compositor should probably have an option to force VSync for games that don't offer double buffering for some reason, the choice for that should always be with the user. And this response here as well from a separate user. The average case isn't the interesting one. If you barely miss the V-blank, you get almost a complete screen almost one refresh cycle earlier. I do agree though that the focus should be on making the latency in non-tearing cases better. There is a lot to be improved, and with VR we can get better than any tearing case. But the biggest disagreement came from this subthread from Kenny Levinson, and I'm not going to read all this out because it was actually responded to by the creator. Furthermore, tearing is only useful when it is timed so most of the frame, more than half, is new. That is not necessarily true. The area of interest can be varying and does not necessarily depend on the amount of screen that is shown with the new frame. If you render at a thousand FPS and missed a page flip, that will lead to content less than one milliseconds older than if a flip was perfect. And even then, it really only matters for dumb games that have no frame scheduling and just brute force rendering. With VSync, you always get information at, in the case of 60 Hz, 16.67 millisecond intervals. With tearing, you get multiple images in that interval. In an ego shooter, which is what he's calling like first person shooters, things like that, you could get, for example, three part images. The middle one is usually the one you want. So it reduces the latency by one third of a frame. On the other hand, tearing that did not match this timing is just distracting the player, which is a negative effect. Once again, that is the decision of the individual player, not ours. I don't know why this specific part of the issue is getting so many developers hung up. Why does it matter that you don't like it? Let people make a choice that you don't like. I don't really mind the feature as such, but I strongly question the claim need and efficacy even more so when considering the refresh rates of gaming setups used for competitive gaming, the high end is at 360Hz now. If I had to guess, then I'd say the vast majority of gamers are still on a 1080p 60Hz monitor. While availability and cost of high refresh rate monitors is getting better, there are various reasons why many people do not have them yet. Of course, a lack of screen tearing won't matter to a professional esports gamer that uses a 360Hz screen, but it will to some that don't want to or straight up can't afford upgrade monitors. For me personally, it doesn't matter too much, but it is hurting Wayland adoption and it is a feature that people expect. And this is the most important part. Besides software not working and things like that, this is one of the biggest complaints I hear about Wayland. It has forced VSync, and that means they just can't use it. Now, the Steam hardware survey doesn't track refresh rates, but it does tell us that 1080p is by far the biggest resolution still in use. It is slowly going down as 1440p takes its place, but it's still definitely the king. And considering that the 1060 is still the biggest GPU on Steam with the 2060 and then 1650 and 3060 after it, I would have to guess that maybe 60 Hertz is probably still the primary refresh rate. Maybe 120 is just behind it, but I would have to guess 60 is still the main. Anyway, back to the main thread, and Kenny did not give up. Once again responding, tearing is always distracting. Non-smooth motion attracts attention. This is objectively untrue. As someone who constantly plays video games with tearing, I can tell you that you very quickly learn to ignore it. It doesn't matter. Literally at all, you just get used to it. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. It is only useful if the new part of the frame contains useful information. For most of these competitive games, the important area is around the crosshair. You seem to agree with this in the example you give. Now, I disagree that it only matters in FPS games. I think it also matters just generally in high action games. If I'm playing something like DMC5, for example, the information that I care about isn't always at the top of the screen. Sometimes it's an enemy just behind me, and that's gonna appear at the bottom of the screen. And a lot of this basically just goes back and forth, back and forth, 
But this one point here demonstrates that a lot of people involved in this thread have no idea why people actually wanted this. Whether a feature has technical merit for implementation is not up to the players, but to the developers. Input is always welcome though. It's always had technical merit. The players have been saying from the start, we do not want VSync. It's the developers who are saying, la 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 la, the issue is not real, there is no technical merit here, we want perfect frames. And Zaver responded by saying, if there was objectively speaking no benefit, then that would be a different thing. But whether or not a percentage of frames that bring only a very low amount of reduced latency feel distracting to a player is a decision they have to make themselves. And Michael comes back again to say the 5 to 6 millisecond point. I wonder how that compares to a typical total latency between visual stimulus hitting the eye and corresponding input in reaction to the stimulus. And the next three comments are basically like, this has literally nothing to do with what we're talking about. There are so many blind tests that you can find that demonstrate that you can feel the difference in like five milliseconds in the context of gaming. I don't know why we're even talking about this. But even though it's taken us a really long time to get here, people have either left this part of the project, or people like Simon Sir and Michael Danza, even though they were really negative about this and didn't really know why or want it to be implemented, have now actually been heavily involved in actually getting it done. Simon Sir, for example, is handling the review of these patches and involved in getting it working over on things like WR Roots. But while this merge request has existed for a really long while, it is only fairly recently that everything is actually coming together. Because it's not just a modification to the core Wayland protocol. We also need things like some kernel patches, for example, and then patches to Mesa, and then patches to individual compositors like Kwin and Gamescope. Then we also need patches over for things like X Wayland. And it's not just one patch for X Wayland, there is a lot of things that still need to be changed. And then you have to worry about the main patch set and making sure that everything is still working with this and it fits in with the current version of the protocol and then it needs to go and make its way out to the users. So it's still going to be quite a while until everybody is just easily able to make use of no VSync when using Wayland. But hopefully, I really hope that 2023 is the year that gaming actually becomes viable on Wayland. And that will be one less thing I have to worry about when I actually want to main Wayland. But let me know your thoughts. Do you already game on Wayland? Do you not really care about VSync? Or are you just never going to use it and you're going to ride X until it dies? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Style, Libera, Pay, and all of that stuff linked down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.